Okay, uh, taking a, a little bit closer look now, um, if you watched the previous video, you saw um, a little bit about hammer replacement in a grand piano. Um, now we're going to take a look at the actual shank that's involved. And while it is possible to actually take, say, this original hammer, which is attached to a shank and then to a flange uh, where it pivots here and simply replace the hammer with a new hammer. It's very possible to do that. Uh, most of the time, we recommend also replacing the shank as well as the flange. And one of the things that you gain, there's a couple of things that you gain by replacing that, um, that part or those parts is one, is this round uh, ball that's covered in um, a buckskin material and there's some synthetics out there today that are just as good as or even not better than buckskin but one of the things when you replace the shanks is you do obtain a new knuckle and you can see uh, the sides there's two black marks that's where that knuckles riding on the repetition lever as it should and then you see right in the middle and I'll try to get it an angle here you can see it's actually indented in the middle that's where the jack is actually pressed up on that knuckle over the years and created that indentation so the knuckle in essence if you look at it is not round anymore as it should be so that really can affect um, playability and of course it can be regulated out to compensate for it but typically um, when replacing hammers we do recommend going ahead and replacing the shank and the flange uh, and that's one reason let's take a look at a new flange or rather a new shank with a brand new knuckle and you can see that it's got that round shape there's no indentations um, we're getting back to um, the way that it was uh, when it came from the factory and we'll try to do a side-by-side -side here and you can kind of see what is gained by going ahead and replacing the shank and you you replace that knuckle as well and you gain some um, a little bit more predictability in the performance of the piano now the next part is this flange where it pivots and the the, the pivoting action that occurs when you play a piano hammer is uh, really essential and what tends to happen if we can get real close here I'll show you there's a a red felt bushed hole and through that hole is a small pin and that's uh, you can see it real good there and that center pin is actually what this is pivoting on as it as it works and typically in this particular one in case you're wondering uh, this was not us but someone had looks like put Teflon or something on there and that's that white residue that you see there but typically what happens is these become uh, loose uh, sometimes they can actually become tighter uh, some can be loose and tighter within the same piano because remember there's 88 of these in the piano and one of the goals with replacing hammers or doing any kind of action work is to make things as predictable as possible and as consistent as possible across all 88 keys and when we look at this pin and you really can't see visibly but we can um, and it's hard to convey this on a video but you get a much more even swing if you will if you watch that swing just as I I uh, move my wrist just a little bit and then if we take a look at this one um, I'm actually not getting as much swing as I'd like which tells me that there's probably more friction in and around that pin and that bushing than I would like to see so the thing to be gained really really is when we uh, when we replace shanks, flanges, and hammers is not only do you improve the tone of the piano and you, you receive a much more resilient hammer that's going to um, work much better from a sound quality, but you're also going to address some very uh, essential regulation points with that knuckle as well as with that center pin.